Hi everybody, it's 314 Reactor here, and today we are looking at the 3D Mark Direct X ray tracing feature test which came out in 2020. So we're just going to look quickly at the documentation here. Obviously, you'd have a DirectX 12 compatible card for this. It runs at Quad HD, I believe. We have more specific test requirements here. Pretty much the same as what we were looking at last week with the Port Royal test. So let's look at the test design. So this is designed to make ray tracing performance the limiting factor. It tries to ray trace the entire screen in one pass. It's Camera rays trace across the field of view with a small random offsets to simulate depth of field effect. It uses DirectX ray tracing tier 1.1. And there is a, another blog post from Microsoft here about DirectX ray tracing tier 1.1. So this is back in the early days of ray tracing. So there was still a lot of advancements to be done. So there's some extra stuff here about inline ray tracing, which is an alternate form of ray tracing that doesn't use any separate dynamic shaders or shader tables. So the reason for implementing this is that perhaps the developer knows the scenario is simple enough that the dynamic overhead of shader scheduling is not worth while. It could be a convenient, efficient way to query an acceleration structure from a shader that doesn't support dynamic shader-based rays, like a compute shader. It might be helpful to combine dynamic shader-based ray tracing with the inline form. Some ray tracing shader stages like intersection shaders and hit shaders don't even support tracing rays via dynamic shader-based ray tracing. But the inline form is available everywhere and for simple recursive rays. So essentially it's for scenes that have very minimal shading complexity. You can sort of use inline ray tracing to make it a bit more efficient. That's another thing they added. Some extra stuff here to reduce the need to have round trips back to the CPU. So you can prepare ray tracing work on the GPU and do shader based culling, sorting, classification, refinement. So that makes things more efficient, takes a lot more off the CPU. Some extra ways of handling ray tracing pipelines, the shaders more efficiently. Extra vertex formats for acceleration structure build. Some extra geometry indexes for ray tracing shaders. And some ray tracing flags and configuration tweak. So basically 1.1 was an ITRIF upgrade in 2020 that just adds some extra things for developers to use to make ray tracing more efficient. So there'll be a link to this in the description. So this test uses features from DXR Ray Tracing Tier 1.1 to create a realistic ray trace depth of field effect. So there's a minimal amount of traditional rendering of the test. Instead of drawing a G buffer or using a rasterizer at all, camera rays are traced in the compute data with random offsets to simulate depth of field effect. To keep light computation to minimum, image-based lighting is used in addition to a baked light map. So camera rays are randomized with per-pixel offsets. There are 12 samples for each pixel when running on the test with default settings. And the camera is stationary. Samples are accumulated at a rate of 12 samples per pixel per frame, which improves the appearance of the depth of field effect from slightly grainy to smooth over the span of several frames. When the camera moves, a light motion blur is applied to reduce the noise. So this test is measuring the peak ray traversal performance of the GPU. All other work such as illumination post-processing is kept to a minimum. The ray tracing acceleration structure is built only once. The scene is static and non-animated. There is no need to update the acceleration structure during the test. It casts primary rays only and they are sorted by direction on the CPU during the test initialization, which is possible because the sampling pattern in screen space is known beforehand. No rasterizer is being used here and there's no G buffer. The whole thing is ray traced, but I still think there are cube maps and some other things being used such as as shadow maps and things like that because when I've seen it and as you've seen in the beginning of the video there there's still not 100% ray trace reflections it looks very cube mappy the lighting it doesn't look very ray traced the shadows don't look very ray traced I think the ray tracing is using just samples from cube maps samples from shadow maps similar to what we were seeing last week but most of the computation is going on with the depth of field so it is fully ray traced but it's it's optimizing other parts of the ray tracing pipeline I believe to ensure that the ray traversal is the key thing being processed here for the depth of field it's just some information about the sample count the default value is 12 but we are going to push it to 20 for the case of uh, running this video and the score is calculated by the average frame rate in frames per second and there is an interactive mode very similar to what we saw in Steel Nomad and motion blur is disabled yeah, you can move around with the WSD keys QE keys control to move faster shift to move slower the left mouse button sets the focus distance the mouse wheel change the camera aperture the right mouse button changes the camera pitch and P takes a screenshot and then we've got the version history of which is just version 1.0 this is a relatively small thing we're going to be looking at today. I thought it'd just be interesting just to look a little bit more into the early days of ray tracing. Similar to what we saw with Port Royal, where I believe there were reflection cubes and they were used to find the radius of ray intersections. So they were, they were actually using ray tracing for the reflections here, but it was using cube maps to help accomplish that. And the shadows were essentially calculated using ray tracing, but to create a shadow map. So they didn't look as amazing as ray trace shadows could be. I imagine this is doing the same thing. So there's not a lot to read about here. It's going to be a fairly short video today. Please do like and subscribe for more videos on graphics and tech videos in general. And check out the link in the description for the playlist that will take you through all of the 3D Mark videos that I've been going across for the past few months. And just a note that you get this when you have 
Port Royale installed as well because it is essentially a subsection of Port Royale. I imagine pretty soon this will end up in the deprecated test lists because it is pretty old and it's not really relevant to modern ray tracing as far as I see, but it's still interesting to look at. So as I said, what we're going to do is we're going to have the sample count at 20, absolutely maxed out. We're running on an RTX 4090 with a Ryzen 7700X and 32 gigabytes of RAM. And as mentioned, you can't change the resolution. It's stuck at 2560 by 1440. So let's run the main thing and see how it looks. So this looks amazing on the loading screen, but it doesn't look anywhere near that good when you actually run it. So this is mainly, yeah, movements and then still shots to allow the rays to accumulate to clean the scene up. And then it changes the aperture of the camera. And you can kind of see that the reflections, at least I'm fairly certain, are cube maps rather than real-time reflections. I could be wrong on that. I will double check when we go into interactive mode. And also the shadows don't look quite as advanced as they could and should be with ray tracing. So I imagine they are ray trace shadows, but I think they're the, the shadow mapped ones from Port Royal. So I've got an average of 70.70 FPS there. And we can have a look at the detailed monitoring. Frame rate pretty much never dips below. Oh, no, it does. It dips to about 56 frames there, about halfway through, and about 49 frames there, about three quarters of the way through. But the majority of the time, it's about 70 FPS, which is, of course, why the average frame rate is 70 FPS. GPU temperature's fairly normal. CPU temperature's fairly normal during all that. GPU load is about 100%, dipping to 99 every now and then, with this CPU utility very, very low. That's all the optimizations of DirectX 1, ensuring that the CPU doesn't have to do much. It's mostly on the GPU. So we've got the clock frequencies there as well, kind of going up and down on the CPU, but being quite consistent on the GPU. Now, it's always interesting to see the GPU versus CPU load on these things. But yeah, it looks like it's utilizing DirectX ray tracing as it's supposed to by making sure the GPU is doing the majority of the work there. So let's now go into interactive mode. So here we are in interactive mode. You can see pretty much what we're seeing in the main test where the samples take a while to fill in with the rays, but when they do, that depth of field look is really clean. I think it's still filling in those rays now, but you get diminishing returns, but you can just see it just looks a little bit cleaner right up to the end, and some of the graininess may be missing through the YouTube compression. You can see as we're moving, it's really obvious that the rays need to accumulate. So you can see them uh, accumulating, accumulating, and more accumulating especially in these bits, sort of a depth of field bouquet bits. It still looks like it's smoothing out a little bit right now, unless I'm imagining it, but yeah. It looks so clean when it has accumulated all those rays. Very, very nice. So yeah, you can move around with W, S, and D, up and down with Q and E, and then you can scroll the mouse wheel to change the aperture, or you can click on certain objects to change the focus of the scene. You can tell the depth of field just looks ultra clean just incredible because it's being ray traced but what I want to know is are the reflections also being ray traced and I don't think they are it's hard to tell because it's not a moving scene but I'm just wondering if it's just ray tracing to a basically a pre-rendered cube map rather than actually traversing rays to calculate where everything is in the scene to get a proper reflection the only thing that makes me think that is that the floor here you can see it has that old sort of specular on it where it's not perspective correct and just basically looks like a specular map or a cube map. And then you've got the shiny bits down here, which just look very cube mappy as well. It doesn't look like it's reflecting the floor properly or anything like that. And then you've got the uh, shiny bits of metal here, which again, look very cube mappy. So what you can do is hold shift to move the camera slower. And you can press control to move the camera faster. Yeah, the way that, that metal is reflecting there just looks like a cube map. It doesn't actually look like that is reflecting the world around it accurately. And this bit down here is a real giveaway as well, because it should be reflecting the floor. Also, reflections wouldn't really move like this, so it doesn't seem like it's actually doing reflections with the ray tracing, and especially this bit here. I mean, this would be reflecting the top of that accurately, and it just doesn't look like it is. And that's a very much sort of mirrored surface. So I think 
while it is all being ray traced, the rays are bouncing off of cube maps and getting the pixel data from them rather than bouncing off the object and bouncing around the scene to get the full reflection. So I think when they say it's fully ray traced and there's minimal traditional rendering, I think that's what they mean. The ray tracing is pretty much entirely being used on the depth of field effect, which makes sense because obviously nothing else is having to accumulate rays, like the reflections aren't having to accumulate rays. The only thing that accumulates rays when you move is the DOF effect. And then the shadows, I imagine, like I said, are being done by the same sort of shadow map technique where it is technically using rays, but it's using rays to create a shadow map, which means it's uh, not as accurate as fully ray tracing the shadows. At least I think so anyway. It's using the rays to create the shadow map and then sampling that. This is interesting though. In the eyeball reflection here, the reflection looks upside down, which is correct, I believe. If the lens is concave, it should be upside down, but then the actual eye is convex, so it should be normal way around. So it could just be the lens there is concave, and that's why it's upside down. And that's either the cube map being upside down to get that effect, or it is indeed ray tracing some sort of a reflection there. And you can kind of see, yeah, you can kind of see the other robots in the scene which if this is a cube map, I don't know if you would see, but then they are static anyway, so you could just bake that into the cube map. So it's tough to tell with that one, and it doesn't mention it in the documentation as far as I saw. So maybe some of the reflections are properly fully ray traced, or it's just all baked into the cube map because it is a static scene. And they mentioned they used image-based lighting and baked in light maps as well, so that's that's not being ray traced, that's just pre-calculated. Tell you what looks really nice is these crystals, they look absolutely amazing. And they remind me of uh, Lego crystals from the 1990s Lego Aquanauts, which was amazing. Love that effect, very Xbox, reminds me of Xbox, oh, so nice. Anyway, so yeah, the main feature, as far as I can see, is that the ray tracing is doing all of the depth of field and as I say it looks really clean it just takes a while to accumulate those rays you can really get nuts with it in the background wow look at that that's where you can really see the rays accumulating they about three seconds to accumulate enough rays there's still a bit of sort of a pattern there in the bouquet, but that could just be the intended light effect. Oh man, you get some really funky effects out of this. But you can just see how normal the scene looks. It almost looks like a an older 3D mark until you turn on that depth of field and then you start to see the sort of more modern nature of it. I'm not sure how many games actually use ray trace depth of field in them. And again, this looks like the same Planet City from the Space Vantage demo, and also Time Spy and Night Raid. So yeah, you can pretty much play around with this all you want and get some really crazy looking depth of field out of it. But there's not that much to the scene. That's why I think this should probably be deprecated at some point and move to the old benchmarks. And then they get a new 3D Mark ray tracing feature test in that has a much more modern, robust representation of ray tracing features and you could redo the scene and have fully ray traced shadows recursive reflections ambient occlusion the whole thing and just ray trace it to the absolute max nowadays and have it as a really good feature test but this is still awesome it's just of course back in 2020 when ray tracing wasn't quite as far ahead as it is now of course the 3000 series was just out when this came out dlss 2 i think it just come out that's back when ray tracing was very much the 30 fps sort of experience at 4k oh and here we can just look at guru 3d's review on it at the time Time, and we can see how cards of the time would have performed. So the 2060, 13 FPS, the very bottom, 2080, 21 FPS, right at the top, the 3090, of course, the 57 FPS. So you can see the leap here between generations over double the performance, and then from 3090 to my 4090, from 57 to 70.70. But of course, I was using 20 ray trace samples rather than 12. So if we rerun with 12 ray trace samples, we can get a direct comparison with the 3090. Okay, so here we are with 12 samples rather than 20, and we are getting 100. 16.21 FPS and a similar story on GPU load and CPU load as well and as we see it's another pretty much a doubling of frame rate again so pretty much got doubling up from the 2080 Ti 
top end 2080 31 almost doubling to the 3090 two years later and then from the 3090 57 fps to two years later 116.21 fps on the 4090 pretty much doubling the performance every generation on this which is pretty crazy and again shows even without implementing super resolution technologies that even just the ray tracing technology itself has become more efficient and also the obviously the hardware itself has become far more powerful in that short amount of time and what we could also do is set it to two samples and see how that runs and so here we are two samples per pixel and yeah you can definitely see the noise there as the camera moves it's not too bad once it's stopped and accumulated rays it just takes a little bit longer to accumulate those rays to get to that cleaner picture but yeah you can definitely see the as it moves the the samples there really being limited and you can really see the diminishing returns of the ray accumulation as well because it you can still sort of see them accumulating but it does get to a point where the image is clean enough even if they are still accumulating and those heavy movements especially when the bouquet is so huge you can really see the two samples and i think this actually came to about 385 fps so it doesn't quite dynamically scale with the amount of samples the amount of frames and just before we go, I was looking at Night Raid again the other day as well as Time Spy. And what I realized is that the architecture here, like these pillars and these arches and stuff like that in the floor, really reminds me of the architecture from this building in 3D Mark 2000. Now, it's not quite the same, but it is very, very familiar. So this could be, again, part of my 3D Mark shared universe that I really, really want to be a thing. It could be that the building that this museum is in is not only on the city planet seen in 3D Mark Vantage, but is also the same building, or at least part of the same architecture, as the building seen in 3D Mark 2000. For instance, you know, the person in the Time Spy demo here could wander a little bit up the hall, turn left, turn right, go into another door, and appear in this very room here. So that's just what I think. It could just be me really, really overthinking it and making connections where there aren't any. But do let me know what you think in the comments, because I'd really love the 3D Mark Shared Universe to be a thing. Anyway, that was the DirectX Ray Tracing Feature Test from 2020. So yeah, at some point I probably will be looking at Speedway, hopefully next week week if I can't get 3D Mark 99 running and then I'll probably end these consecutive videos on 3D Mark there rounding off this series as mentioned you can see in the description there is a link to the playlist showing all of them so you can catch up it's been a really fun adventure to go over all these 3D Mark benchmarks it's given me a lot of nostalgia it's given me a lot of insight into how they work as well as give me a good history of graphics which is always really fun and it's also given me a new appreciation for some of the newer tests that I perhaps hadn't seen enough of to get full appreciation for after that I probably will re revisit some of these. I'll probably do a video on all these feature tests at some point after we've done Speedway and 3D Mark 99. But after Speedway and 3D Mark 99, we'll probably return to a bit more of the pick and mix sort of videos that this channel is hopefully well known and appreciated for. Do leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think and subscribe and hit the little bell really helps. Thank you for watching. I hope you're all staying safe and I will see you in the next video.